The Mahjong T6 is a piston-filled fountain pen with a metal exterior and a resin interior, and that resin is visible through cutouts in the metal. This style is called a skeleton fountain pen. It's available in a handful of colors, as well as two distinct patterns, one with cross-hatching that resembles the Bird's Nest Stadium in Beijing, and City Lights, which we have here today. To me, it looks a lot like the intersection of a city street. The bottom finial is flat and polished, as is the top finial. And on the back of the top finial, we have Mahjong printed on top. The cap is mostly straight and it has a series of dots and dashes cut out, which to me look quite a bit like the windows of a skyscraper. And then the clip is triangular in shape and at the bottom we have three little jewels that resemble a traffic light. It's a bent metal clip which is springy and functional. As we work our way down the cap, we then have the cap band, which is pretty plain, and it does have a bunch of vertical ribs, which gives you good grip for capping and uncapping. And then at the bottom, we have a beveled edge down to the barrel. The cap comes off in one and three quarters turn to reveal a stainless steel nib. This one is branded Moon Man, which is the previous name of Mahjong, and I have it in medium, but you can buy this in extra fine as well as fine. And on the back, we have a typical black plastic feed. The section starts with a flare up and then it has a tapering portion down to threads that are smooth to the touch. The section is made out of the same material as the rest of the pen, which I find a little bit slick to the touch. And then we have the barrel, which has symbols that look like lanes going up to an intersection. Most of these sections have arrows going towards the nib, but one has an arrow followed by an X and then a little turnaround sign. And as we work our way back, we then have our piston knob. The piston knob has ribs similar to the cap. However, these go at an angle. And if I give the piston a counterclockwise turn, you can see the rod moving up and down inside the barrel. In the hand, the pen has good heft, but it's very well balanced as well. The section, again, is a little bit slick to the touch, and the cap posts securely, but not deeply, and it does post on the piston knob, which means you could accidentally actuate the piston when it's posted. I find that the cap does back weight the pen and make it quite long, so for me, it's not a great posting cap. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Mahjong T6, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. To disassemble the Mahjong T6, you are going to need a wrench. I found this Wing Sung wrench works quite well, which you can easily pick up on eBay and AliExpress. The cap unscrews, and at the bottom of the cap, we can see a flat headed screw, which can be removed to uh, take off the finial and the clip. But I'm gonna leave it in place for now. The nib and feed unscrew. And they're held in place by this collar and they can be pulled right out. The section does not unscrew from the main body, and usually that is a negative for me. However, there's a large opening to the barrel, so I don't find that to be a concern when it comes to cleaning. To remove the piston, we're gonna give the piston knob a counterclockwise turn, and there are two flats that are exposed underneath, which we can grab a hold of with our wing sung wrench and give it a clockwise turn. Eventually, the piston unit will come out, at which point we have an empty barrel and our piston unit. Continuing to give the knob a twist, the rod will come out, followed by a connector piece, and then we have a key and the piston knob. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. 
To reassemble, we'll start with the piston unit. The key gets placed onto the piston knob. And then we'll screw the knob onto this connector just a little bit. And then we'll place our piston on the other end. We'll give it a twist. And what we're looking for is when the piston is fully retracted, we want the knob to butt up against this flange. There's a little bit of a gap there. So I am going to take the piston out, give the knob a little twist, and then come back in. That looks just about perfect. We'll then screw this onto our barrel, give it a counterclockwise turn. The um, flats will become visible. Use our wrench to screw it down in a clock counterclockwise turn, sorry. In a counterclockwise turn. Perfect. At this point, the piston should be fully functional. Great. And then we have the nib and feed. The nib just sits on top of the feed. There aren't any notches or anything to hold it in place, so just line it up the best you can. And then if we look at the collar, we can see there's a flat at the bottom, and that lines up with the bottom of this feed, which also has a flat. We'll then screw our nib unit onto the front of the pen. Followed by the cap. And we're ready to ink up. Filling up the Mahjong T6, today I selected Diamine Ancient Copper. I have it filled up in an old Orochizuku bottle, which I find nice and large and easy to fill up for uh, piston pens as well as vacuum fillers. Cap and screws. And then we're going to extend the piston all the way down. Submerge the nib into ink and rotate the piston knob to draw up ink. In order to get a full fill, I'm gonna expel the ink one more time and then rotate it back up. That looks like a nice full fill. I'll go ahead and wipe off the excess ink. Cap up our pen and our ink, and we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Mahjong T6, cap and screws. And here we have a stainless steel medium nib. And it's a smooth nib. It's a bit dry and thin for a medium, um, but I think if you spend a little bit of time to stretch out those tines, you'd find that it would uh, become a lot more wetter and maybe a little bit wider as well. Our ink. It's diamine. Ancient copper. For flex, I'll turn the page. No real line variation to be had here, but as I push to try and spread out the tines, I do see a lot more ink flow. So that's very promising when it comes to tuning this nib for reverse writing. It's actually pretty smooth, but it did get quite dry. That G got washed out pretty well. So I think in a pinch, you could reverse write 
to get a thinner line, but it might not be the most reliable uh, reverse writer. So what do I think of the Mahjong T6? I think it's a pretty cool looking pen. Uh, outside of doing these reviews, I do work in the automotive industry. So the automotive theme to this pen really drew me to it. I love that it's a piston filler. It has a great ink supply. And again, that kind of also plays towards that automotive theme. And I like all of the little symbolism. I think it's cool having the different lanes and the uh, traffic light on the clip is a really cute uh, touch. I also like the attention to detail with adding ribs on uh, highly used areas like the piston knob and the cap. I wish that they would have considered doing the same on the section or perhaps even do a matte finish that might make this pen look a little more attractive and less gaudy. Um, and then besides that, of course, the piston or the cap, I should say, does not post very deeply. So that's something that could have been improved uh, if they made the design of the barrel taper from this end to the piston knob would have helped with posting the cap. And then the only other thing that um, I found a little bit off was the machining on the cap. Especially when I first got it, the cutouts were quite sharp and it almost felt like a cheese grater. So probably a little bit more attention to the machining here would help out. But besides that, I think it's a very cool pen. They really nailed it with the theme of a, a city light. And it's a comfortable pen with a large ink supply and a well-tuned nib, though maybe a little bit dry. So overall, I do like this pen quite a bit and it's a fun one to have in your collection. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.